so we are now live to the second. Sriti, uh, uh, you can start. Hello, everyone, respected organizers, and all participants present here. Good afternoon to all who are here, and hello to the subscribers who are watching this after the live session. I am Suniti Shukla, Content Head of the IK Hub, and it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all to this amazing webinar organized by the IQ Hub. We are honored to announce that we have Mr. Arun Kumar Gunasekaran all the way from Spain with us to give an inspiring session on do you believe in life after law school? Mr. Arun has done his BABL honors from School of Excellence in Law from Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar Law University, Chennai and has secured a first class honors in a five year integrated law degree. Further, he has done his LLM in maritime law from University College London, situated in United Kingdom, and is specialized in carriage of goods by sea, international trade law, marine uh, insurance and media law. He is also admitted to the role of solicitors in England and Wales, regulated by the Solicitors Regulation Authority. And at last, but not the least, he is founder of RJ Law, which is an international law firm. And we feel proud to say that he is son of our own soil. I would like. Uh, I would now request uh, Mr. Uh, like to welcome Mr. Uh, Ritorat Singh, managing partner of the IQ Hub who made his best effort in organizing such a wonderful, uh, inspiring session. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to welcome, uh, request Mr. Rituraj to welcome uh, Arun, sir, and start this uh, session. Uh, first of all, thank you, sir. Uh, as Mr. Arun has always been a great mentor for me, actually, I think, uh, we have met a couple of years ago in an uh, international uh, conference in my college. And since then, till the day, we have no, never lost touch. I always uh, demand help from him, and it's always so welcoming, so welcoming to help me in any manner he can. Likewise, a uh, couple of days ago, I went, in, I went to him and uh, asked, so I want to do a live session on uh, law and anything that can help lawyers and law students to uh, get past this COVID situation and how to prepare for all this in this pandemic. So, so rapidly said, yes, I'll be there and uh, I'll do all the needful things. So for that, I'm very, very thankful to Sir and I'm very, very thankful to our subscribers who took their time from their busy schedule to watch this uh, webinar. I now welcome Mr. Arun to uh, get ahead with the webinar. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ritu. Um, can we have the PDF the PowerPoint presentation, please? Sure, 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 sure. Um, hello and good morning to one and all. It's good morning in Spain and good afternoon to people in India. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here with the IQ Hub and thanks to Mr. Rituraj for taking this initiative and organizing everything. I'm not a techie guy, so he is the one who organized this live session. And thanks to all the subscribers and viewers who managed to find that one spot in the house which has uninterrupted Wi-Fi connection. All right, so let's go to the session today. So today our question is like, do you believe in life after law school? Why this topic? Um, you see, when I joined law school, I was the first in my family to become a lawyer. And when I did that, I had no idea how the profession is going to be, how it's going to be. I only had the passion to become a lawyer without knowing what it has in store for me. In, during my five years, I met a lot of mentors in my life who guided me and made me what I am today. So I'm just going to pass on the knowledge which I received from my mentors. And I wish... Uh, that you future lawyers should do the same by passing on the knowledge. And about the topic itself, I always believed my life started after the law school because whatever you learn in law is the foundation, but when it come, when it's applied in practice, it's completely a different world. So let's see without further ado what it is about. Um, can we have the next slide, please? 
So who are we? Um, yeah, you, you will be seeing the sprawling uh, below that we are an international law firm with presence in India, United Kingdom, Singapore, and Spain. And we work in more than 50 countries through our business partners. And, and we are proud to say that we, we were one of the first virtual law firms in the world, even before this whole concept of work from home, um, that social distancing all came. Uh, one of the reasons being that I, I am present in Spain and my partner lives in London and our clients are from Asia. So the only way we can co communicate with them is uh, through Skype and Zoom and everything. And it worked pretty well for the last four years. And with Corona situation, we are still surviving. And um, I, I, I'm a bit happy that we chose that path. Yeah. Let's go to the next slide, please. Yes, so career planning. I'm sure most of you would have chosen law because someone in your family is a lawyer and they would have advised you, but there might be some who are like first generation lawyers like me. So when you're planning your career, it has to go in this path, you know, it's very confusing. You have to have a checklist of like, what you want to do with your life? And then you have to look for a, for a particular college which will suit your needs and which will make you achieve your um, ambition in life. And then there is motivation, how you motivate yourself. You can get motivation from outside and you also need to get motivation from inside. And then success is always not guaranteed in our profession. You will be winning, you'll be losing, but that's part and parcel of life. Regarding the other things, like, of course, in order to become a lawyer, you need to be qualified as a law student. Like you have to pass your exams and you have to get your degree. And then you have to analyze your strengths and weaknesses, and then you have to define your goals. So the question now is like, after your law degree, what, what could be the career path you could take? So let's go to the next slide. Right, there are like so many options here. Um, so let's see the not so, um, Popular option, I wouldn't say popular. Popular is not the right word. Not so common option, which would be like taking up armed services. Armed services, you have the judge advocate general, which is common with our Indian army. And people take up this where they become um, advocate for cases, which is trial, uh, which is tried within the army. And then the second option is teaching, which is one of my favorite. I would love to be a teacher. Um, um, but I, 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 I enjoy more uh, as an advocate rather than a teacher. And then there is other thing is legal outsourcing, where there is uh, there are LPOs which process the legal documentation for US, UK, out from India. And then you can think about pursuing a master's, which is a master's in law or master's in uh, business administration, which is the most popular thing which a law student take up. Uh, politics, we have a lot of lawyers who have taken up politics and who are very successful and who are very good uh, orators. And even speaking of uh, the world, we have like Obama, who's a lawyer turned politician. And then you can you could become a writer if you're good with um, words, then you can write books, uh, law books and everything. You have like a lot of uh, famous writers for law books. As a law student, you would know all the writers who does it. Analyst who does analysis of law, like um, critics who criticize how the law is and things like that. The next slide, please. Yeah, here. This is the most, most, most common and uh, most popular stuff, which is used by a lot of law students. Um, first is the advocate. We all know what it is. We will deal with it in detail later on. And then we have in-house lawyers. In-house lawyers are the ones who work with um, corporates, um, insurance companies. They are in-house lawyers. They deal with internal matters like drafting contracts, advising on the regulations and uh, compliance issues. And they also advise them on um, if there is a claim against uh, a company or a corporate, um, what they do is they are like the first person to take the arrows and then they def try to defend the company before instructing the external um, external counsel to deal with it. 
and then judiciary where you have to write for the judicial exams to become judges district judges um, magistrates and all those things then you have civil services uh, law is a very good option for you if you want to become an ias or ips or one of those several civil services options you have um, because when you do law you also if it's a integrated course you also take up things like sociology economics all those small small stuff which can become your optional paper when you're taking up civil services then you have legal research a legal researcher is a person who does um, is specialized in legal research um, they do the work the groundwork of looking at how things have changed over the years and they pr present the case to an advocate and an advocate can put it before the judge and then you have legal draftsmen i mean the people who help the legislature to draft the con uh, the draft the acts the legal acts and everything and then you can be become a very good journalist because being a lawyer you you know exactly what questions to ask and uh, how to be integrated uh, like you you can ask the right questions you know your rights and you can um, you can also try investigative journalism which will be very interesting for you and the last one is foreign qualification uh, it is off late being popular like i i am a english qualified uh, solicitor so there are people who choose to do um, either in uk or in new york the two most popular destinations for indians uh, indian qualified advocates to convert their degree into a foreign qualification and they become a solicitor or a practicing lawyer in new york um can we go to the next slide please So this is exactly the position a lot of you will be in because um, it it's like a maze, right? When you join the law school, the first year, the first thing you will think about is like, mm, torts law, very interesting. Contracts law, very, very interesting. Oh, criminal law, I'm going to become a criminal lawyer. Everyone would have thought like, okay, I'm going to become a criminal lawyer. I did the same. And then the second year or third year, you will be coming across like IP law intellectual property law and you're like hmm, this sounds very fascinating let's try it and then you learn cyber law and you're like oh this sounds really techy so maybe i should try it so you keep get confused uh, during your course like five years course i had this dilemma you know i was like thinking what i'm going to do what i'm going to do and every year it was changing and changing so how you can guide your path is what we are going to see like um, yeah, you, you cannot try everything right. And you if you fail, then you have to keep jumping and start from everything again. So how, how you can uh, try it out when you are a law student is something which we will uh, see later on. So this thing, um, when you finish your law, it's always the choice of the, the previous slide, which showed like you have so many choices. But the question is like, which fits you well? Because not everyone can be like uh, Mr. Ramjit Malani or uh, Mr. Uh, Harish Shalve, right? So everyone is meant for a particular role and um, it's okay. I mean, there is nothing, one is great and one is less. No, everything is equal. And so how to choose it? So to choose it, let's go to the next slide. Let's start with advocacy because I, I can advise you on advocacy um, because I've done advocacy since I qualified. So the question always when you become an advocate is either it's law firm or am I going to be a litigation expert? So when you are a litigation specialist, how it works is like you join a lawyer in, in the local courts or in the high court or in the Supreme Court as a junior. And then you learn the trade and you slowly become an um, individual practitioner. When you join a law firm, you'll be one of the several associates and you learn the trade and you slowly become a partner. So that's the two pathways when you are an advocate. But the important question is like how to choose uh, which one is suitable for you. The best idea I would give everyone as a law student now is go to your nearby courts or look for an advocate in your own town, in your own jurisdiction, ask him, or her, can I be become an intern to you? So what I did when I was in my first year is I joined a, a trial lawyer in my hometown, which is Tanjavur, a small town in um, south of India, in Tamil Nadu. 
And um, I, I started following him. I shadowed him. I used to go to his office every single day, learned how he approaches the client, how he talks to the client, uh, how he argues the case the next day, how he prepares for the argument. I helped him with the research. I helped him with drafting. I helped him in the sense like typing what he dictates. You know, first year, you won't know much. So all these things helped me to see that which path I'm going to take. Because I knew then and there that arguing in the court is going to give me pleasure. So I chose advocacy then and there. So what I would suggest the law student is um, in your first year, choose a district court level or, a, or even lower court level um, lawyer who is practicing in that, in that court. Go to them and approach them. Don't be shy because the maximum they can say is a no. But what if they say yes? So don't be shy. Just go to them. Ask them, can I be your intern? And you join them. You follow them. You shadow them. But the important thing is you cannot be lethargic like you are lethargic in your um, assignments or the coursework in your law school. Because internship is where you really, really learn the profession. Follow them, learn them, and be sincere. Like, for instance, if they say 6 o'clock, be there at 6 o'clock. Do not comply on time. Just follow them and do whatever work they are asking you to do. Probably in the second year, go to a court which is higher than what you are for doing. If you are in the magistrate court, go to the district level court, a lawyer who is practicing in district courts. If you are in the district court, go to someone who is practicing in high court. So you will learn how what you learned in the lower courts is being applied in the higher courts. When there is an appeal from the lower court, how it's being dealt in the higher courts. This will help you to learn the trades of advocacy. And if you are not sure that whether you want to be an advocate or not, because you find it like very time consuming, because at times you will be working till three o'clock in the morning. And then next day you have to rush around like eight o'clock to the office. I have done it. I have finished work at three and then next day morning, I have to start at seven and all those things happens. But it's part and part of uh, parcel of uh, an advocate's life, you know. And you shouldn't be worried about doing it and you should be ready to do it. But if someone believes that this is not what you are and you want a more uh, relaxed life, then apply to a law firm. Look for a law firm within your within your district. And if if it's not possible, uh, off late, there has been a lot of virtual internships. Even my law firm provides virtual internships. And I will give you our email ID later on where you can uh, send us an application and we will have a small interview before we choose virtual interns and we will get you involved in like research, drafting and other work. So look for a law firm, write to them, ask them whether you can come uh, during your break or after, after college hours as an intern and learn uh, how a law firm works. And if you find law firm is also not your thing, then you can write to insurance companies, corporates, and ask them, uh, look for their legal officer. You can find it easily these days. Just Google like, and you will find the legal officer. Write to the legal officer directly, ask them whether they will be interested in having an intern because you want to see how things work there. So this is how during your law school, um, you will look into uh, different areas of practices and you can say like, okay, maybe I should do it. And people who are interested in judiciary, there are some high courts which offer judicial clerkships. And even Supreme Court has this judicial clerkship. But it's I think it's only after you finish your law degree. But that's a very good way to mix up with um, judges in the Supreme Court or judges in the high court. Um, so it will help you to see how a judge approaches a case, how a judgment is being delivered, how a judgment is being drafted, and all those things. So having seen that this is the path which has you have to uh, look into uh, to choose your career option, let's go to the next slide uh, where I will speak about like what litigation involves. So in litigation, the fun thing about litigation is like you will be having different courts to go to. Um, I know lawyers who work all the way all the way from the magistrate court to Supreme Court. They go there argue with the same enthusiasm and the same uh, they put the same efforts and it's really really nice to see um, a trial in a lower courts you know because that's where you learn the advocacy the real advocacy skills 
um, that you have to think on your spot, especially if you want to learn the entire criminal law um, or uh, criminal procedure code, you should go and watch a murder trial in the district court. And that opens up like, okay, I have to become a lawyer like him, you know, like or her. Uh, you you will see how, how interesting it is. The other plus point about litigation is you can be, uh, do like different specializations. There are lawyers who specialize only in criminal law, only in civil litigation. Under the civil litigation, you have like consumer courts, lawyers who only uh, go for the banking tribunals. There are like um, uh, ombudsman services where you go and argue. So you have like different specializations. So when you are studying law, um, you will already know like more or less you will have a um, a kind of affinity towards a particular subject, right? Um, like, for instance, when I started law, I always liked um, criminal law. It was one of my favorite subjects in uh, law school. Um, and then constitutional law was also another favorite subject of mine. Um, but I was not sure, like, what I'm going to do with. So I was looking for an option where I can move out of India and work internationally, but it need not um, um, chain me to a particular jurisdiction. And I came up with, during my research, I came up with mar maritime law and I started uh, doing an internship in Singapore. I applied and I went and did internship with that law firm. And I really enjoyed that internship. And I saw that maritime law has a lot of, um, um, the next uh, key word in this slide, rewarding, a lot of rewarding experience. And it was like really challenging and a uh, lot of traveling. Uh, you get to travel around the world because of the nature of the business. Um, so I chose maritime law as my specialization and no regrets till date. So the third one is rewarding. As I just said, litigation rewards how um, you get to meet a lot of people. Um, you, you will make a very good network. Um, you will be um, you will feel like really awesome, you know, and um, the most important reward of litigation is if you decide, you can help people who are in need in the sense like people who cannot afford to have a lawyer. There are lawyers I know who take up cases um, pro bono and they don't charge because they believe in certain ideologies and they want to fight for the people who doesn't have the support. And that kind of uh, power is where, which you will get in litigation because when you work in a law firm, you have all these um, billing targets and everything, unless it's your own law firm. So, but when you are an individual uh, lawyer or advocate, you can fight for people, people, right? And that helps a lot. Um, there are people who need support from lawyers. Um, there are poor people who cannot afford to have a lawyer. And that can be a rewarding experience if you become an individual lawyer. Uh, regarding the money, uh, it's slow. When you are a junior most lawyer, at times you won't get anything. You'll get peanuts and uh, slowly, but steadily, once you establish yourself, once you have argued like few cases and people will know, OK, this guy can argue a case. I'm going to give him the job. And once you keep building your portfolio, once you are getting more wins in the court, you will be untouchable. Like the money, there is no limit to the money you can charge, you know, because there are people who are willing to pay anything to um, for to get a lawyer to work for them. The the next one is market doesn't affect work, which is true because most of the time as an individual lawyer, your client will be an individual and whatever the pandemic may be, there will still be land disputes, there will still be uh, contractual disputes and everything. And as an individual lawyer, you don't have to worry about like uh, what, what whether I have to pay for the um, extra things like pay for the juniors or pay for uh, rental of the building and all those things, everything will be taken care of because the work, there is no end to the work. There is no recession to be an individual lawyer as long as you have established that you are a good um, advocate. The next one is independence. Yes, it's just like how I said, like it, um, you can take up any case you want. You don't have to answer to anyone. And you can choose if you don't want to take a case, you can decide why you don't want to take a case and you can reject a case. Because this is such a job that you, you have the ultimate freedom. You know, you, you are your own boss and no one can question you. Um, the next is adrenaline rush. 
um, I don't know um, how many of you are mooters or um, uh, trial practitioners here, but the the ultimate, ultimate adrenaline rush a lawyer will get is when you are standing before a judge or before a witness and they ask you a question. And that question makes you to think on the spot and come up with a brilliant answer, which puts them off, you know, uh, and or a question which makes the witness to say what you want him to say or her to say, you know, that exactly is the adrenaline rush I'm speaking about. And you all should experience it at least once, even if you choose, uh, if even if you don't choose advocacy and you choose any of the other options, uh, adrenaline rush is going to be really amazing in this world. And hard work, yes, you have to, it's a continuous learning process. Um, you have to read a lot. You have to up, keep yourself updated with the changes in the law or new judgments coming up. So it's a hard work. It's not easy. You will be ha having to put more than 16 hours of work every day. Trust me when I say it. I lost all my hair because of all the hard work uh, throughout these years. All right, let's go to my, the next slide, please. A law firm. Okay, this slide is very interesting. And um, why a law firm and why these two guys? I, I'm sure many of you would have seen Suits because whenever you see in a movie or in a, any series, you will always see this lawyer jumping up before the judge and coming up with all these arguments with lengthy dialogues and stuff and people clapping in the courts and all those things. So this is one of the very, very few um, series which showed what's the life of a lawyer like before going for a trial and what's the life of a lawyer like in a law firm. Because you have to spend like hours and hours reading through documents, hours and hours preparing the cases, hours and hours drafting. And it's not very easy. It's not easy. You will lose. It's not always you're going to win. You will lose the initial stages but you will win the final battle you know like so there is a lot of uh, process behind um, behind uh, uh, before you, i mean behind the scenes before you approach the court um, so that's one of the series i would recommend you should watch it in order to know like what you have to do uh, to be a lawyer you know you have to prepare a lot uh, next slide please Can, I, can we have the next slide? Thanks. So, <clears throat> sorry, can you, yeah, thanks. So when you are in a law firm or as, a, as an advocate, what you need as a law, lawyer is the following skills, interviewing and advising. Many times um, you have to remember that your client may not be always honest with you. At times they might be not willing to come forward with the truth. So it's your technique of how to coax the person and slowly bring out the truth from him because there is this common saying in India, right? You cannot lie to a doctor and a lawyer, but most of the times your client will uh, try to hide the truth from you. And that's when you have to bring up your interviewing skills. And most of the times I will advise them upfront whether it's worth pursuing the matter or worth settling it because when you listen to the all the facts you will know whether it's a winnable case or a, or is the case worth going to the court because a good lawyer never takes the case to the court he always wins even before reaching it uh, reaching the court so that's a very important skill you have to develop and how you can do it is like you can practice it with your classmates uh, bring them together and ask them to create an imaginary background story and practice your interviewing and advising skills, which will help you in the long run. The second one is legal writing. How you write um, legally is different from how you write to a friend or in your Facebook post and stuff. Uh, this is something I always tell my clients, you know, because they will come up with uh, huge paragraphs of like, their, their issues and I always tell them, come on, this is not a Facebook post. Leave the writing part to me. I'm your lawyer. I will take care of it. Just tell me the facts as it is. So legal writing is a skill, very important skill, which you have to develop. And the best way for you to develop it is like 
look at like precedents which are available online. You know, if you want to write a le letter of demand, for instance, just go to Google and say like letter of demand samples. There are like millions of samples available. Just go through it, see how the language is being used, how simple it's being used. Because one of the things which I believe a lawyer should keep um, keep going forward is um, keep everything precise, not to round about like pages and pages of things. Because if you have to use 10 words to say something which is which can be said in one word, you have to offer the one word, you know? So legal drafting. Legal drafting is the same like legal writing. You will get a lot of drafts available on my contracts, memorandum of agreements, um, rental contracts, a power of attorneys. Just Google it, look into it, learn how it's being drafted, how the languages are used. Um, you can adopt some of it to your own draft and you can prepare your own draft. Keep it ready when you're a starting practice. And now with all the um, lockdown, you'll be bored. This is something which you can do from your home. You know, Legal research. Legal research is, uh, again, uh, now you have all these facilities of looking into uh, Manupatra and AAR online searches and everything. But when I started in the law school, we didn't have such benefits. And we had to go to the library and look into the AAR for the index and have to look for the cases, you know. And that was a challenge, but that also made me what I am today. Because when I was doing an internship in Singapore, my boss asked me, like, um, in Singapore, they have a very, a very good system of, like, legal searches. But he said, uh, despite that, um, I want you to go to the library in the Supreme Court of Singapore. I want you to go through the case books and see if there is any precedent which is going to be affecting our case. And I spent a whole day, broke only for lunch, but a whole day I was spent in the uh, library in the Supreme Court of Singapore, looking through the uh, books, different books to find a case which might affect our uh, case. But thankfully, nothing like that happened. Um, then practical problem solving. Like I said to you before, a lot of these issues can be settled even before you reach the court. At times you should know when a lawyer should send a letter or when you can draft an email for the client to send it on, uh, on his or her own, right? So this is something which is very, very important for you as a practical problem solver. Because if you are only thinking about fees, then you will not be growing big. So because you will not create a reputation. Uh, practical problem solving is something which comes very handy because that client will start trusting you because you solve their problems even before it reach the court. And that will make them as your best market marketing guy. He is going to talk about you to others. And that's how you're going to become popular. Next is negotiation skills. Negotiation skills, you should know when you have to be calm, when you have to be aggressive. It's again, very interesting aspect of it, negotiation with the other side. If you're doing it with a non-advocate, uh, non um, you, you have to be a bit more polite because you cannot take them for a right. But if you're dealing with another lawyer, then you have to be aggressive so you can show that why they have to settle the case as per your terms. Advocacy. Advocacy is another important thing you have to learn. Uh, please do not watch uh, movies and series to learn it uh, because that most of the time it's like uh, fake. Uh, just go to a um, court nearby. Go and spend the whole day there. Even if no lawyer is taking you as an intern, just go there. Sit from morning until lunchtime. Go for lunch. Come back in the afternoon. Afternoons will be very... Um, you will feel sleepy because of our old court ho houses. Like I, I used to go to the Madras High Court, which is one of the colonial buildings. After lunch, it's always like very, uh, it's a good place to take a nap, you know, because it's cold and stuff. But some advocates will really get your attention. And those are the advocates you should follow and you should see their advocacy skills in order to learn how things work. And that helps you in the long run as well. And if there is moot court competition and uh, mock trial competitions in your college or nearby colleges, you just give a try. You, do, you Even if you're not selected, just give your name and just go for the trials, you know, because that builds your confidence. 
Like it took me almost two years before I got into a mood team because I I didn't give up. Uh, first time I I came last I think, and then the second time I became last but one. Uh, so you I I kept building on because um, English was not my favorite language when I was in school. So when I went to um, law school, it I, I, it took me a while to pick it up, and then uh, it helped me to take part in mood codes to overcome my inhibition. with related in relation to the language you know so that's what you have to do if you're uh, really shy about uh, english take a take up mood competitions in your mother tongue you know that will help you in the long run workload management is another law uh, lawyer skills you know that um good memory always helps in your uh, when you're a lawyer because you can juggle different things but if you're not blessed with good memory there are like so many tools where you can task and uh, you can put things like how things are going with different cases um, there are like oh, apps several apps which can help you to manage your workload as a lawyer and lawyer skills is always a uh, ongoing learning so you have to learn you have to read the newspaper to see what there is a, if there is a change in laws there are a lot of law journals which keep comes up with the new interesting judgments and there are a lot of um, articles which speaks about uh, what things you have to do and stuff the last but not the least is networking make friends make connections make friends because they are going to be your uh, people they are the ones who are going to give you a uh, lot of clients they are the ones who are going to give you a lot of referrals um, and i think most of my clients come purely through my networking and that's something you should do you know you have to go and talk to people you cannot be shy just go and tell them introduce yourself like i'm a lawyer i am doing this um just uh, uh, it's nice knowing you you know just simple simple words will keep the relationships going uh can we go to the next slide please so what firms look for if uh, because i can speak from uh, my experience as a person who worked with a law firm in singapore and then a person who runs a law firm now so we look for strong foundations you know like um if you are a student first year student we will probably ask you like what is your favorite hobby you know there are people who just put uh, random stuff like oh reading books and then i will ask them question like what's the last book you read and they are like oh so you cannot lie in the cv you know like but if you are a third year student i will look at a um, recent subject you did and i will ask you is there something you can do um you can say like any recent case law which is interesting or from a recent newspaper topic so these are the things a law firm will look for in the in the law student we don't look for you to have like a first class marks or second class marks but someone who is who has strong foundations who know what they want if you want to be a good lawyer you will be reading paper newspaper that's the basic so if i ask you a question in current uh, current affairs you should be able to answer it that's something which all the law firm look at uh, next point please inclination to learn and update i think we covered it uh, just now so you have to have the inclination to learn and update yourself with everything uh, next point positive outlook yes this is something very very important you know like uh, there are people who always say things like mm, if um, if i take up this case i may lose and um, or if i um, if i don't approach this person um, I, i i don't have to be ashamed of anything but what if i approach this person and the person says no um, so there are these kind of negative thoughts will affect in your advocacy as well because you will stop seeing the when you read the facts of the case you will stop seeing the positive things in support of your client you will only be focusing on the negative stuff so this is something important where the positive outlook comes in um to approach any case with the view that okay this case is going to be a victorious case because i am going to find the point that one point that one master stroke that one knockout punch in order to win this case so that's the kind of um, effort we the firms look at um, so a lot of times this question comes you know like i i have had this question from my mentor yeah he will ask me what do you think about this case what do you think uh, will happen 
and i have to always give him a positive answer but not just saying like we will win but i have to substantiate how we will win so that that will put you in a better pedestal than other um, people who are interning or working in the law firm and then work experience work experience like i said uh, our firm is open to taking first year uh, law students but there are a lot of law firms uh, which are not uh, open to it they look for at least uh, people from third year onwards and they expect you to have a little bit of work experience in uh, in um, like in a district court level or a magistrate court level as we spoke about so that's something you have to gain if you are already a third year or fourth year law student or if you are just starting don't worry about anything just when you have a break just go and shadow a lawyer uh, next bullet point creative thinking um this is also another important thing because a lawyer should always come up with creative arguments in order to um, in order to make the judge think because uh, our legal system gives like benefits of doubt so if you if you can create that little tiny bit of doubt in the mind of the judge it will help your client's case uh, i'm just giving an example but um creative thinking is very critical for a for a lawyer so when you are submitting your cv or um, or your cover letter if you stand out from the crowd uh, that will that will definitely fetch you an internship or a job with law firms uh, next slide please thinking on your feet that i already said about like uh, the adrenaline rush you get when you are made a question and you think on your feet um, like i always when during my um, interviews with uh, interns or uh, associates i always put them a tricky question and if they can think on their feet even if their answer is wrong i don't care because as long as they can substantiate their answer i am happy to take them in because they with more time they will pick it up easily uh, next slide please yeah oh we have come to the end of the session um so yeah if you have any questions um this is your time and you can you can ask so we will go by the comments we'll uh, start by the comments and uh, right. like we will be going to serial number one okay actually we have a special comment from so he is our other managing partner mr sabir singh Hello, hi. Yeah. There's a there's a big comment for you. Hi. Thanks. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, um, okay. That's a very interesting point. Um, uh, trust me, there are a lot of good seniors around, and uh, you just need to find the right senior. um because you i i had very good seniors uh, my mentor is justice s nagamuthu and he he taught me a lot and, and i learned a lot of things from him and what i am today is because of his guidance you know um so you will definitely come across a lot of um, good seniors in our country just that look for them don't give up just because one or two are rotten yes there is a specialization study in tax i know a lot of lawyers in even my wife is a spanish tax lawyer um so you have a specialization study in tax um but for some reason i never liked um tax law in uh, when i was in law school and i'm not good in max so i i gave up on specializing that but there are a lot of uh, people who do um tax law specialization uh, uh, along with corporate secretarial acs or cs training or something like that um so there there are lawyers who specialize in that you just all you have to do is google for tax lawyers near you and you can you can join their chamber to know more about it so there's a question from my side right uh so uh, actually which uh, if a student is pursuing law what are the main uh, criteria that he or she needs to fulfill and what are the main 
uh, things that you need to focus on. You mean to become a lawyer or to become a law student? Uh, actually, a lawyer, sir. We are already lawyer. a law student. Okay, the most important thing is read as much as you can because that's going to inculcate a habit of reading. Um, like when I say read, you are like, oh, sir, we are already reading the college books and um, we don't want to read more. But you can read even um, novels, fiction, because that's going to make you get into the habit of reading. Because that's something which we are we started missing uh, once the social media age came in, uh, once all these websites, YouTube and everything came in, um, people stopped reading, you know. So if you can stick to reading, even if it's a fiction, if you just keep on reading, it will inculcate the habit of reading, which will help you when you are a lawyer, because you have to read a lot. Trust me, when I say you have to read a lot, it's like read a lot, like cartons and cartons of documents. If there is a huge trial, there can be documents which run for 10,000 pages. You have to not only read it, you have to remember which document has which um, contract or which boxes, which paper, you know. So that's something which will, which can be inculcated by reading a lot. Yes, so uh, the major question a student who is pursuing law is so uh, like uh, you told us that we can uh, practice internationally. So how can a student apply for an international if you do not know the law, but international law, if you do not know international law, how can you pursue uh, that? Sir? So what is the point? Okay, good question. Um, so this, like I said, there are laws which can be universally similar. I won't say the same, but similar. For instance, maritime law, it's usually taken after the English law because when a ship is sailing from one port to another, it's not always within India, right? It has yeah. to go from India to, say, Germany or something. And the ship owner might be a Greek and the captain of the ship can be Polish. So you have like so many nationality involved in a maritime trade. Um, that's why they usually adopt um, English law as the governing law of the contract. So that's one of the reasons why I spe uh, did my specialization in maritime law in UK. Um, so that helped me to learn, understand the law. But if you want to become an international lawyer and get like qualified in another jurisdiction, you have to look at the jurisdiction you want to get qualified. For instance, uh, to become a solicitor in UK, I had to do an exam uh, called QLTS, a Qualified Lawyers Transfer Scheme. Qualified Lawyers Transfer Scheme. And that exam had two parts. The first part is a multiple choice test. And the second part is an advocacy, more like a practical test. The first, for the first part, we had to read uh, 11 subjects under the English law, like including tax, uh, which I hated. <laughs> and uh, corporate law, criminal law, towards the Constitution of England, and um, so many other things. So we were tested in that. Unless you really read those laws, you cannot pass that exam. And after you pass, then you go to the second part of the exam, which is practical. But the practical also deals with uh, uh, cr criminal litigation, civil litigation, property and probate, and business business law. So you have to, again, prepare for those exams. And when you do the preparation, you are already becoming involved in the law of England and you become well versed in the law. Same goes for New York Bar as well. For New York Bar, there is a course you have to prepare for the exams. Um, when you prepare for the exams, you read it in a small span of time. What uh, solicitor in England reading it for three years, I prepared it in a span of one year. So that's how it things go. Uh, there is no escaping it. Uh, you have to read. Yes, sir. But, sir, as of in India, sir, uh, we have uh, our law subjects in both Hindi and English. But, sir, majorly in India, uh, students pursue their uh, law uh, English. In Delhi. So, sir, is that 
uh, is it okay to apply for uh, international law for them because they are not that uh, wide open for English? So, is that going to be problem? So, how would you like to uh, tell our student to come over that uh, problem? See, getting over a language barrier. Language is basically for communication, right? So, um, in, it may be imp uh, hard in the in the olden times for you to learn a new language, but everyone has now access to smartphones. Smartphones have a lot of apps through which you can learn English. So, if you want to achieve something, you have to cross that obstacle. Uh, there will be obstacles on the path, you know. Look into it. Uh, look for a join an English school to learn English or read uh, books in English to learn it or watch English movies to learn English or take up a app free mobile app to learn English you have to prepare yourself it's like uh, doing a penis you know like you have to prepare for achieve to in order to achieve something you have to put in the hard work there is no escaping the hard work once you have achieved that then you can look into smart work but until you achieve a particular stage in life, you have to put in the hard work. There is no other choice. Can a person be forgiven for crime done under alcohol influence? There are a lot of cases to it. Like, um, no, they cannot be forgiven because there is two things. One is undue influence, like, uh, um, sorry, what is it called? Um, involuntary intoxication the other one is voluntary intoxication one is involuntary intoxication where a person is uh, without his knowledge drugged yeah and uh, and uh, taken a hallucination and it, it is a mitigating factor but if a person voluntarily took alcohol and he committed a crime there is no uh, he cannot be forgiven So how to become a solicitor? Okay, yes. Um, yeah, I just explained, but um, there is a change in the procedure now to become a solicitor. They are um, proposing to introduce a new exam from next year called um, SQE, Solicitor's Qualification Examination in UK. Um, that's going to be a little bit more difficult where you have to uh, be attached to a law firm for six months to two years. And uh, you have to take up the LPC exams in order to become a solicitor. I haven't read about the new procedure yet, but by the time you will be ready to take it, it's going to be the new method of exam. So what you can do is you can go to Solicitors Regulatory Authorities uh, website and just look for SQE and you have the entire step-by-step -step procedure of how to become a solicitor. Yeah, he has given the answer to the question here. Yeah. Okay. Statement of eyewitness or opinion of doctor, what matters more in a rape case? It depends on case by case basis, you know. Um, it can, like the statement of eyewitness can be broken. The opinion of doctor can be broken as well. So. It depends on how strong um, the statement of eyewitness is or how strong the opinion of the doctor is. So if we cannot say like we cannot put uh, importance for one and uh, the other is no less. It depends on case by case. Oh, that's another thing about law is like no two cases are similar. Like it, won't, it may be tiny bit similar, but not um, the same. Which one carries more weightage? All right. I guess that was the last question. Okay, great. Uh, next slide, please, so I can give my contact details. So if you want to reach out to us, um, you can look into our website, uh, rjlaw.com, or email us uh, if you want to. Uh, do internship with a law firm, mail at rjlaw.com. And if you want to reach out to me personally, you have my Instagram handle. And yeah, that's basically it. And yes, thanks to everyone for this session. I enjoyed it. I hope you all did as well. Thanks to Mr. Ritu and Ms. Sunita, Suniti.
um, for for this um, session. Thanks for organizing this. Um, yeah. So now it was a great session. So thank you, thank you very much for spending uh, spending us such a wonderful time, for such a uh, informative webinar. So I, Rituraj Singh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Arun uh, who spared who spared time from his daily schedule to take such an informative session and such an uh, awesome session that we cannot express it in words. So we would like to have you with us in future also. I would like now like to thank Mr. Sabi Singh, who is the managing partner of the IQ Hub, who has helped me in every possible manner he could. I would also like to thank uh, Ms. Suniti Shukla, who contented the IQ Hub, who took all the all the necessary steps to help me in this webinar and making this webinar uh, a successful event. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, subscriber. And thank you to the uh, subscribers who are watching past this live session. We will also take your questions after this. And uh, we'll be uh, taking it up to Arun, sir, and uh, respectively we'll be delivering the answers to you. Or you can directly contact to Arun, sir, on the given mail ID or uh, the given uh, Instagram. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.